Hey, what's up guys over here? So the nightmare year for Ubisoft has continued because they got caught running to journalists to blame gamers for the failures of Assassin's Creed Shadows. Now recently we saw the release of Star Wars Outlaws, which was another flop for Ubisoft, which coincided with another drop in their stock, resulting in a group of their shareholders demanding some serious changes with the company. Now, not only are these games causing drops in stock and concerns among shareholders because of the quality of the gameplay, it also is exacerbated by the fact that these developers keep doing interviews where they make contradictory or just outright offensive statements about their potential customers, and that's exactly what happened again here. Honestly, if I was someone who was serious at Ubisoft, if I saw one of the developers approaching an interviewer, I would jump on them like the Secret Service to prevent them from saying further things that might damage the reputation of Ubisoft and its products. Now, looking forward into 2024, Ubisoft really only has one bullet or one major bullet left in their chamber, and that's Assassin's Creed Shadows, which releases in November of this year, which, once again, I'll remind you that they ensured to shareholders this game would succeed because players would receive it in a very positive way. And a few days ago, we saw the world trailer for Assassin's Creed Shadows, and look at that. It's an absolute flop that is heavily disliked by gamers, getting 83,000 dislikes and only 19,000 likes. Yeah, a brutal ratio right there. Now, what do you do when you get criticism like that? Well, it looks like Ubisoft has chosen the worst possible route by going to the New York Times to attack players in defense of Assassin's Creed Shadows. Like I said, they should not be doing any more interviews because they keep making fools out of themselves, and this is just another example of that. Now, before we get into the Assassin's Creed portion of the article, I think that part place brings up a really good point of comparison, where basically the tactics of Ubisoft currently are very similar to the tactics done by the executives at Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, back in 2022. So back then, uh, the executives of the show approached Vanity Fair writers, and they attacked Tolkien's fans and said that Lord of the Rings... Uh, the Rings of Power was something that they were bashing and hating on simply because of diversity, right? And we know now that this show has been a disaster. It has returned for its second season, seeing a 50% decline in viewership from season one. And as always, you see the games journalists coming out to defend and deflect any criticism directed towards the creators of the show. But back in 2022, that duo at Variety wrote that when Amazon released photos of its multicultural cast, even without character names or plot details, the studio endured a reflexive attack from trolls, the anonymous online kind. Kind of like a, a page out of the book of Amanda Stenberg with the acolyte hate, right? Blaming the bigots in the trolls online for the viewership and the criticism that they're receiving. But anyways, they go on to cite a woman named Maria Rios, Mel Donato, right, who they described as a token scholar. That was definitely not an intentional uh, pun they made there, but anyways. However, she is anything but. Rather, she was a PhD student at the University of Glasgow who is interested in ethics, feminist theory, and encountering the other in Token's works. She also happened to be the equity and diversity offer for the University of Glasgow's Center for Fantasy and the Fantastic. Oh, it all adds up, doesn't it? Now, she would continue and say that basically these fans are racist for simply wanting a lore-accurate adaptation of this franchise, where Mel Donato questioned, obviously, there was going to be push and backlash, but the question is, from whom? Uh, who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? Now, we've seen examples of this very recently, actually, with the Lord of the Rings product Tales of the Shire that recently had a showcase here showing some diversity among the hobbits. You can see uh, that's, that's how it turned out, and it's getting clowned on very hard right now on social media. But now we can go back to Assassin's Creed Shadows and compare what happened in 2022 with uh, Rings of Power versus this. So again, we're going to see people at Ubisoft approach journalists and then try to cite a fraudster expert, and then try to deflect all criticism onto bigotry. So here we go. They end up teaming up with New York Times and one of the writers there. 
And similar to what happened back then, uh, they quote this, Some gamers erupted over his appearance, referring to Yasuke, convinced that the franchise, known for its immersive recreations of the past, had gone woke by including a black character in its depiction of 16th century Japan. He then claims that developers received personal attacks and death threats during an online harassment campaign. To no surprise, he shares no evidence of such attacks or threats. And honestly, I think that just comes with the territory, unfortunately. I mean, anyone covering Assassin's Creed Shadows and criticizing it for some of its decisions also get that kind of vitriol from people online, but no one really cares what happens to YouTubers and people like that who are criticizing the show because they're, you know, they're doing wrong think. But anyways, they have this whole thing about going woke because they hired, they, they included a black character in this feudal Japan setting. And that is a complete misrepresentation of what people are trying to say. There is a reason that they chose Yasuke. It's not because he was the best potential uh, main protagonist. It's because they wanted a diversity representation as the main character, okay? They could have made Yasuke a, a offshoot character, a side story, something like that. And I think people really would have enjoyed it. But they clearly took him and propped him front and center because they thought it would be very good for their diversity and inclusivity. I, I think it's very obvious what they were going for here with this setting and this choice of character. And in the process, having to literally rewrite Japanese history to make it happen, right? That's the most offensive part. They are preaching about bigotry and all these terrible things, but in the same breath, they are literally rewriting Japanese history in the name of diversity and progression. And it's really ridiculous. And they call you a bigot for questioning their virtue signaling campaigns. But anyways, the big heart of the issue here is the characterization of Yasuke in the game. And the problem with Ubisoft is that they, they can't settle their minds on how they want to approach this character and other historical characters in this game, beginning months ago by saying they wanted to faithfully depict real historical figures. And this was something that was backed up by Ubisoft and also games journalists who said Yasuke is a samurai, not a retainer, as history has always suggested up until this point. He is a samurai, and that if you have an issue with that, there's clearly something wrong with you. You're a bigot, what have you. But then we continue on in the article where another individual was cited as the source and the proof that Yasuke is a samurai. So after attacking the gamers, Small then went into uh, weaving a false narrative that has already been refuted for months by citing historian Yu Hirayama, who is an admitted communist. Small cites Hirayama's claim that it is without question that Yasuke was a samurai. There are very few historical documents on him, but there's no doubt he was a samurai who served Nobunaga, as uh, Hirayama claims. Now, before we get into Hirayama, just remember the many different revolving doors of supposed historians who tried to claim that Yasuke was a samurai, beginning with, of course, Thomas Lockley. We've talked about him in depth before, but to very quickly state what he did, he made a 400-page slot book making baseless claims that Yasuke was a samurai, and in his own time, slowly over the course of years, defacing the Wikipedia page of Yasuke, which always uh, referred to him as a retainer, and slowly removed sources claiming as such that he was a retainer, and then slowly started inserting his own book as a source, claiming he was a samurai, eventually leading until a few months ago where he was changed from a retainer to a samurai on the Wikipedia page all in an effort to promote his own book. And that was exposed, and a lot of people in Japan are very offended by some of the things in this book. And eventually, people had to move on to a new expert, which was this guy, whoever this guy is, right? So he comes out and says, uh, Yasuke is a samurai, and people on Twitter went crazy with this clip. There was tweets with tens of thousands of likes, people wagging their fingers in the faces of people who were critics of the samurai claim saying, you're wrong, this historian, this expert has come forward and proved you wrong. Well, it turns out according to this Japanese YouTuber and many others, that this is just a guy who works at a, a Japanese restaurant. This is just a guy who's a YouTuber. He's not a historian. He's just a Japanese man wearing a kimono and people used him as an expert. They assumed he must be an expert on Japanese history which is uh, very offensive, by the way. It, it's like seeing a dude named Billy Bob wearing a cowboy hat and in a pickup truck and being like, yep, he must be an expert on, uh, 
on some of the, the, the past of America, the American history. It's just such a stupid thing to claim. So that was debunked. And then we get to Hirayama. He was the next one in the revolving door here. And he would make his statements, like I said, and this would be used by people, again, to weaponize hatred towards anyone questioning the samurai status of Yasuke. And again, as it was pointed out in the article, his claims are that there's not enough history or historical evidence to suggest that he's not a samurai, basically. Like, they're saying that the absence of proof is the, the proof of the claim. Like, it, it's so ridiculous. But going forward, this would be questioned as well, beginning with the fact that he is a member of the Japanese Communist Party. And if you're like me, I hear that and already dismiss his claims. Like, but if that's not enough for you, understand why that's relevant. Because Hirayama subscribes to the Marxist histiography theory that basically does not require empirical evidence to make claims about history. Meaning, you can just say whatever you want pretty much if it just feels right. So that's how he's determining that Yasuke is a samurai. Basically saying, yeah, there's no real evidence to suggest it, but it just, it just makes sense to me. So believe me. Obviously, this was trashed on once people realized this claim was completely baseless and based on a really crazy uh, Marxist histiography theory that, that is just trash. But moving forward in the article, we have some other historians who do say that Yasuke was more likely a retainer and someone that was an entertainer as well for Nobunaga. And they even go on to say that even if it was proven that Yasuke was a samurai, it was much more of a formality that often was given to favorite entertainers and other uh, companions of these people, including sumo wrestlers. Like, obviously it wasn't expected that they were going to go out and fight in wars, but it was given as sort of a aesthetic, and they were given a sword and everything else. It was more of a vanity-related thing. So those are very damning claims against the claims that Yasuke was a samurai, but continuing on, not only did Small cite the communist Hirayama, but like Vanity Fair with Maldonado, he cited Kazuma Hashimoto, who he described as a Japanese consultant and translator in the video game industry. Hashimoto told Small, it was people in the West who were upset with seeing Yasuke as a samurai. Now, that is a pretty ridiculous claim because it's not just people in the West who have an issue with this claim. It's actually a lot more heated among Japanese gamers to the point where it got the attention of the Japanese government. And look at some of the trailers on the Japanese side of YouTube. This was some of the early teasers. Look at the like-dislike ratio. It's even more crooked and negative than the ones in the West. And again, people will defend this by saying, oh, it's just a bunch of trolls from the West creating accounts just to dislike it, which is such a baseless and really just an act of copium on their behalf. But look at the trailer release from a few days ago, okay? Again, the like-dislike ratio is even more brutal. So it's continued all throughout these months leading up to the release of this, and it's not getting any better. But we continue on in the articles where it says, this patently false and this is patently false and makes absolutely no sense given Small even admits that Ubisoft apologized to Japanese player, uh, players. Small wrote, after the online blowback, the game's development team attempted to assuage the concerns about the game's authenticity, apologizing in a lengthy statement for provide for promotional materials that it said had bothered some Japanese audiences. In fact, he even noted that a political party in Japan formally asked the government to comment on what it considers historical inaccuracies. And yes, they did make an apology post, where ironically, they flipped their entire view of how history will play into their own games now changing their perspective from being historically accurate to now saying that we try to respect Japanese culture, but we'll make our own creative decisions. Where then a month after that, that in this post right here, they would flip-flop once again to their main position. And then a few days ago, they flip-flopped again, now saying that they're going to make creative choices and that it's not going to be historically accurate. It's mind-blowing. It's a complete mess. And yeah, that's Assassin's Creed Shadows, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hail Mary for Ubisoft this year. This is their last chance to make up for the countless flops and the hundreds of millions of dollars they've lost on other projects. And this is this is their savior. Assassin's Creed Shadows that's looking like it's gonna be one of the biggest bombs 
of 2024, but that's not too surprising given the context surrounding this game. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.